May 10th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Acts chapter 20 from the New Testament. After the disturbance had ended, Paul sent for the disciples and after encouraging them and saying farewell, he left to go to Macedonia. After he had gone through those regions and spoken many words of encouragement to the believers there, he came to Greece, where he stayed for three months. Because the Jews had made a plot against him as he was intending to sail for Syria, he decided to return through Macedonia. Paul was accompanied by Sopater, son of Pyrrhus, from Beria, Aristarchus, and Secundus from Thessalonica, Gaius from Derby and Timothy, as well as Tychus and Trophimus from the province of Asia. These had gone on ahead and were waiting for us in Troas. We sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread, and within five days we came to the others in Troas, where we stayed for seven days. On the first day of the week, when we met to break bread, Paul began to speak to the people. And because he intended to leave the next day, he extended his message until midnight. Now there were many lamps in the upstairs room where we were meeting. A young man named Eutychus, who was sitting in the window, was sinking into a deep sleep while Paul continued to speak for a long time. Fast asleep, he fell down from the third story and was picked up dead. But Paul went down, threw himself on the young man, put his arms around him, and said, do not be distressed, for he is still alive. Then Paul went back upstairs, and after he had broken bread and eaten, he talked with them a long time until dawn. Then he left. They took the boy home alive and were greatly comforted. We went on ahead to the ship and put out to sea for Assos, intending to take Paul aboard there, for he had arranged it this way. He himself was intending to go there by land. When he met us in Assos, we took him aboard and went to Metellini. We set sail from there, and on the following day, we arrived at Chios. The next day, we approached Samos, and the day after that, we arrived at Miletus. For Paul had decided to sail past Ephesus so as to not spend time in the province of Asia, for he was hurrying to arrive in Jerusalem, if possible, by the day of Pentecost. From Miletus he sent a message to Ephesus, telling the elders of the church to come to him. When they arrived, he said to them, You yourselves know how I lived the whole time I was with you, from the first day I set foot in the province of Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears, and with the trials that happened to me because of the plots of the Jews. You know that I did not hold back from proclaiming to you anything that would be helpful and from teaching you publicly and from house to house, testifying to both Jews and Greeks about repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus. And now, compelled by the Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem without knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit warns me in town after town that imprisonment and persecutions are awaiting for me. But I do not consider my life worth anything to myself so that I may finish my task and the ministry that I receive from the Lord Jesus, to testify to the good news of God's grace. And now I know that none of you, among whom I went around proclaiming the kingdom, will see me again. Therefore I declare to you today that I am innocent of the blood of you all, for I did not hold back from announcing to you the whole purpose of God. Watch out for yourselves and for all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God that he obtained with the blood of his own son. I know that after I am gone, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Even from among your own group, men will arise, teaching perversions of the truth to draw the disciples away after them. Therefore be alert, remembering that night and day for three years, I did not stop warning each one of you with tears. And now I entrust you to God and to the message of his grace. This message is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I have desired no one's silver or gold or clothing. You yourselves know that these hands of mine provided for my needs and the needs of those who were with me. By all these things, I have shown you that by working in this way, 
we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. When he had said these things, he knelt down with them all and prayed. They all began to weep loudly and hugged Paul and kissed him, especially saddened by what he had said that they were not going to see him again. Then they accompanied him to the ship. God, when Paul goes to say goodbye and gives one last fabulous sermon, <laughs> his sermon really bothers me. These are people he's taught and trained and discipled for a couple years. And so they have all the basis for the Christian faith. But as... Paul is departing them knowing he's probably not going to see them ever again. He takes that valuable time to warn them. To warn them to be constantly on guard themselves for their flock, for the people in the church, within the church. Gosh, I, it just really bothers me. And yet I see it happening within my church and other churches that there are people within the church that are doing more damage inside our walls than people outside of our walls. <sighs> and my heart just breaks, God. I, I don't know. I don't know how Satan got a hold of their heart. I don't know how they don't see that they're living that type of agenda. I don't know, God, I just, I continue to pray for churches in the United States and around the world that, that they will stay on guard, that they will realize that we are huge targets to be taken down. And I'm sure Satan's pretty happy when he does. If it was that important for Paul to make sure he said as the last thing he was going to say to them before leaving them, it's got to be something pretty serious that has always taken place in churches. God, I just pray for the people around those people that they, out of, out of strength and holy righteousness, go to those people and talk to them. Like you talk about in Matthew, go and talk to them. If they don't listen, bring somebody else. If they don't listen, bring somebody else. We can't have the church destroyed from the inside out. I've already left one church that that happened with the pastor. Completely destroyed the church. And in the process of the pastor becoming the wolf in that church there's quite a few people in that church who who now don't go to church anymore who've lost their path with you god the this whole thing that paul is talking about just really bothers me how can those of us who know better destroy like this I don't have answers and and I know that all I can do is pray pray for my church pray for other churches but all of us need to be on constant watch Paul says I know that after I'm gone fierce wolves will come in among you not sparing the flock and I don't know if anybody has ever studied or watched wolves but there is a level of sneakiness and a level of warfare to a pack of wolves that's absolutely incredible to watch and I can just see how much Satan wants to devour the churches if he can start taking them down from the inside out the rest of the flock will just scatter God, my heart is just heavy today with 
with thoughts of that, but I also know that you're fully in control. I know who wins at the end. It's just a fight between now and then that pains my heart. In your son's name I pray. Amen.